Good morning and welcome to Herschel Grammar School's School Report News Bulletin for the 27th of March 2014. The news headlines today are It has been announced that a full inquiry will take place into the pricing policy of the big six energy companies. The British consumer is now facing some of the most expensive energy bills in Europe. We have been asking students at Herschel whether, whether there are any alternatives for importing expensive foreign oils. Here is a report from my colleague Harsha. David Cameron ensures that by the end of this year there will be fracking wells set up in the UK. It appears last year's protests in West Sussex did not affect the Minister's opinions about the use of shale gas. Due to the incident in Crimea, President Obama held a summit in the Netherlands to press the Prime Minister and other European Union leaders to impose tougher sanctions on Russia and be less reliant on Russia's gas for energy. David Cameron insisted that the lack of understanding will become growing enthusiasm for fracking as people see how beneficial it is. He said, so I'm confident we'll win the argument, not least by sort of demonstrating that this is a good technology that will be good for our country. He added, why has it taken so long in the UK and Europe as compared to the US? Earlier, I spoke to Mr Goodman and asked for his views. Why do you think fracking was better accepted in the USA than the UK? Ooh. Well, I think there are lots of reasons there. We are a small, very densely populated country. America is a vast country with you know, enormous empty spaces where you could get all the gas out of the ground you wanted without really anyone noticing. Whereas here, especially in the, the south of England and up through um, to the west coast, Lancashire area, all very densely populated areas. When you start making major incursions into the ground there, people are going to notice and be disturbed about it. I also think there's, there's um, something to do with the psyche of, of each nation there as well. Um, uh, America has, 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 has made its money by adventurers and, and people taking a risk, giving things a go. Whereas I think we are perhaps a more sort of conservative bunch who like our green and pleasant land. And also, is the government right to ignore the protests last year in West Sussex? I, if by that question you mean where do I stand on fracking, um, which I think um, is essentially what you're asking, um, then I, I, I personally am behind fracking and I think the protesters are really saying I don't want something in, in, in my back garden. Um, if you ask me would I rather have energy produced from gas coming out of the ground in Britain or us relying on Mr Putin in Russia uh, to get our gas supplies, I would rather we put up with a little bit of ugliness and a little bit of unpleasantness here than getting all our energy supplies from a potential megalomania. Uh, thank you for your time and back to John. No worries, any time. And news just in from the business faculty. Herschel's Young Enterprise teams had a night of great success at the Young Enterprise Slough, Windsor and Maidenhead area finals. We are now joined by Oliver Shaw, MD of Rococo and the winner of the prestigious Company of the Year award. So, what was the competition last night, Oliver? Um, the competition that we entered last night was a young enterprise competition. And what this is, is it's a competition where, as six formers, we'll get together in a group and um, we'll uh, see if we can come up with a product, manufacture it ourselves, and then, as a team, sell it to the general public, which was a really good learning experience for us. Can you tell us about your winning product? Uh, our winning product was actually a just a normal tie, like the one you've got there, made of denim. And it's particularly unique, not just because uh, it's made of denim, but because of how we made it ourselves. So it's we get the jeans from local charity shops, like the ones you may have donated to, and then we cut the jeans up ourselves, and then we turn it into a tie, and then we sell it to the general public. How did you come up with these denim ties? Well, I think when we wanted to come up with a product, we sort of looked for 
problems before we came up with the problem, uh, came up with the products. And uh, a problem I think you'll agree in today's society a lot is that we're not sustainable enough. And this, and this is something that I think we we really considered with our denim tires because it's made of a material that would usually be thrown away, or would be struggle to to be sold in a, a charity shop. I think we really we're really solving a problem there. Uh, thank you, Oliver. You have really made her show proud. Yesterday, 10,000 students were affected by a teacher strike, National Union of Teachers. Union leaders were protesting about the reforms of the Education Secretary, Michael Gove. Here now are Neha and Suti with their report. Schools in every area were called off due to the strike yesterday. The, Nas the National Union of the Teachers protested against a long-running dispute overpaid workload, pensions and Gove's method of running the schools. One of Gove's methods that concerns Herschel the most is the 10-hour school day. Mr Gove, Education Secretary, has recently stated that our state schools should be like private schools. He wants British students to be amongst the cleverest in the world, and he is planning to do this through making our 7-hour school day 10 hours long. The Office of Chief, Sir Michael Walshaw, says that Gove has surrounded himself with dodding dogs. Gove says that he, his reforms will go into action if David Cameron is voted Prime Minister in the next election. Let's hear what some of our students think. Do you think the 10 hour school day is a good idea? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's a really great idea. I think in the school at the moment we don't get enough time to, to really um, get into detail with the subject. I feel like you could eradicate the process of homework. Unsupervised work is not as effective. If we have a longer school day, then uh, we can get our work done with our teachers. What advantages do you think people will face if this happens? Well, the advantage is, like I said, that they'd uh, be supervised by their teacher, that the work would be done more effectively, and um, just being more comfortable in the school environment, being there for a longer period of time, I think it helps, helps build uh, each other up together. Thank you. Yes. What do you think of Michael Gove's education? In my personal opinion, I think he's trying to make it go back to the olden days, where things were harder than they were. Such as like he now increased tuition fees, so now it's harder for normal people to go to, um, to into higher education, such as university. Uh, he's also made like the exams for A level students and GCC students harder by making it no longer modular but linear, so you do all of them at the end of the year. So it's harder for you to um, get a high marks if you mess up one time. Um, I don't I, I don't like the idea of a ten hour day as well because uh, it's not the child's choice. He's forced to do a 10 hour day. If he doesn't want to, why should he be chosen? And if, if the government comes out, that means a new government has to come in, they might change as well, and they might like, change students. Um, and the teachers will, te there will be more teachers for jobs. That's the only good thing we can see out of this. Because teachers can't be teaching for 10 hours straight as well. Do you think teacher strike is a good idea? I do think teacher strike is a good idea because it affects so many people. I mean, yesterday I think it was 320,000 teachers stri um, striking all around the UK. And it's so effective because so many lessons are disrupted. And of course, if lessons are disrupted, then parents are because they may have to take time off work. And it really puts a point, the, uh, it really puts the point across that you know, teachers should not be taken for granted. I think they really are some of the unsung heroes um, of, in the UK, especially at this time, because the job they do is so difficult. It's not just the hours during the school day that they put in, it's the hours they put in when everyone else has gone home and they're still working and they're still doing work over even their holidays and their, and their half terms, which they're supposed to have off. It's also, we live, because we live in a democracy, you know, strike should be allowed because. Otherwise, you know, that's your, that's your right. It's your right to strike and your right to say that, you know, if you're not happy with something, then you can go and change it. Do you think it's a good idea to have unqualified teachers? I don't think it's a good idea to have unqualified teachers. I think they should have certain rules set which show that the teacher has passed certain exams. Even if they're not um, exams which are like degrees or anything, I think they should have um, exams put in place which show that the teacher is, is qualified and, and does know what they're teaching the children. 
because it's what the teacher is passing on to the children that they're going to learn. That's what they're going to be using in their in their careers for the future. So I think it's important that they do have uh, some show of qualification. Thank you. Now a story from the International News Deck. Crimea and the prospect of a new Cold War. We asked our fellow history teacher, Mr. Sharp, his views on Crimea. President Obama has said that in the light of events, we are not entering a new Cold War. Do you think he is right? Well, that's a good question. Um, first of all, um, I think perhaps uh, President uh, Obama is trying to dampen down um, fears that it could be a new Cold War, because obviously that would be a significant um, a change in the whole geopolitical um, situation. Um, in terms of whether he's right or not, I think it's probably too soon to, to make any um, such judgments, um, and it will remain to be seen what uh, Putin does next. Um, I think he's probably quite right to, at this stage to, to dampen down um, belief that it, that, it, that it's a new Cold War. I have seen that uh, mentioned in certain news um, circles. Uh, obviously, that would be that would be. A long way down the line, I think, before before we could call it a new a new Cold War, lots of things would, would have to happen. Um, and when you think of the, the scale of, of the, the previous Cold War, it wasn't just a, a problem that affected uh, European countries and, and mainland Europe and Eastern Europe. It was really a worldwide uh, thing. For example, you had you know the, um, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, of course. And other factors. I don't think Putin is so uh, perhaps heavily involved in, in other areas of the world as his um, previous uh, Soviet counterparts were, but um, he is also involved in places like Syria um, and um, deeply interested in the Middle East, so um, I think it remains, remain, remains to be seen. Thanks sir. And now our second question is, what are your views on the European Union? Do you think that we should leave or stay? Oh, good. Another good question, An another one that's in the news a lot lately as well. My own personal feelings are that I'm very pro-European. Um, I feel that Europe is a force for good. Um, I think that the whole reason the European Union was created in the first place in its previous guise as the EEC was, was really to prevent war um, between the, the main European countries and to promote uh, greater cooperation and understanding. And that was on the back of two terrible, catastrophic world wars, um, which, which not only tore Europe apart, but tore the world apart. Um, I know there has been the war in Yugoslavia in the 1990s, but apart from that, um, uh, and, and various things going on in the Balkans, I ha the European project has kept the peace, has fostered uh, greater cooperation between countries, particularly between France and Germany, um, two countries which were at each other's, other's throats uh, in the previous um, 70 or 80 years before the uh, the EEC was created. So my own personal feelings are, for those reasons alone, that's a good enough reason um, for us to be heavily involved uh, in the European project. Um, and I think there's a lot of economic benefits uh, to be had as well. Yeah. Thank you for your answers. You're very welcome. And now it's time for our weather. So let's hand over to our fantastic weather girl. Thanks, John. Good morning, this is Karen reporting for, from BBC School Report at Herschel Grammar School. Today's weather is chilly in most parts of the UK and will be chilly for the rest of the week. A bit of frost in places at the start of today, but that will progress, progress on. Temperatures will rise by 3 o'clock pm and hopefully the sun will start to come out of its hiding place. Showers in the UK but will gradually get warmer by the weekend. Sunday will be 19 degrees Celsius in London. London has a few showers this week, but hopefully, but hopefully the sun will start to show. That's it for now. Thank you. And back to John. Okay. Thank you, Karen. On a very busy news day, this is Herschel Grammar School School Report. Signing off now, and good afternoon, everyone. See you at six.